Hi, thanks for joining us today with Old Mill Thin Brick. We're going to be showing you an exterior application on how to install step by step an exterior thin brick system. A lot of people ask, what is thin brick and what is the difference between thin brick and regular brick? And the biggest difference is you take a regular brick and you cut both sides of it and now you have a thin brick. The advantage to this is lightweight, easy to install. Another advantage is the corner options. This is cut, perfect for corners. So the tools you're going to need for this project are pretty basic. You're going to need a razor knife, pointer, peanut grinder, at least an 18 volt drill, fasteners with the screws, grout bag or cake bag, and a grout tool. And your most trusted tool is your four foot level for this project. I can see in our exterior wall system we have the Tyvek stucco wrap. This is a unique product. We recommend this product definitely. Uh, the reason being is it has this corrugated texture to it. Uh, this helps in weep away water from the wall, from the exterior wall, and out through the drip edge pan here. Uh, this, this is definitely something that we recommend. Check with your local building codes before you do this project though and make sure this is installed correctly. A couple of things you're going to want to look for on this exterior project. You're going to make sure the Tyvek product is installed properly. Check with Tyvek online. You can also check to make sure your lappings at least six inches overlap to make sure that's done properly, that the water moisture is going to be able to, to work its way down to the flashing. Another, another thing you're going to want to look for is that the windows are installed properly, that you do have the water barrier around those, the pans are done right, and that all the exterior is sealed up before we start putting on the old mill panel. A couple of unique features with the old mill thin brick system and the old mill thin brick panel is the high impact polystyrene system itself. One of the unique features is the back of this panel has these cut grooves in it to help with moisture disbursement. And the coolest feature on this entire panel system is the shelving built into it to help alignment with brick. There's a couple of things you're going to want to do on the first panel installation. You're going to first start from the bottom outside corner and align that second thing you're going to want to do is adjust your brick on the very bottom by cutting the panel so that you have a full brick touching your flashing. Polystyrene cuts smooth with a razor knife. Makes it easy to do. Now that we got our panel cut, you can see that our brick fits in here perfect. This makes it nice to have a full brick starting at the bottom and work your way up. You always want to have your cuts at the top to end at the top of your wall. When installing the panel, you're going to want to use a four foot level, line up on your studs at 16's, and take that in to where your fastener is flush with the panel. You do not want that sticking out. You want it nice and flush. When the brick is adhered to that, you're not going to have any problems. Next panel you're going to want to put up just go ahead and take a measure, take your panel over, make a cut. Okay, when installing the next panel, you want to use a four foot level. Go ahead and take your fastener, put it right between your joint. And on the verticals, you're going to want to use that on every other one. So that'll go on your next channel right here. Like so. The old mill fastener is designed to have a little bit of a flex so that you will not get any crackage within the panel itself when you torque it down. The other item is on placement on horizontal and vertical, where do you put those? What you're going to want to do is you want to put these every 8 inches vertically and horizontally on the 16 on the stud. So we're going to want to put our next fastener here. That way we've got 8 inches between. It's okay to put them uh, extra on the outside edges. We recommend that. On your outside panel, what you're going to want to do is use the 4 foot level again. Take a corner brick. Take that corner brick, set it within your channel, and line that up. 
Once you get that lined up, go ahead and take your fasteners, put those in, and now you can start with their next panel. One of the cool features on this panel system is the tongue and groove, which is nice just for locking and moisture issues. So what you're going to want to do is put this panel up. Second thing you want to do is cut this in half. That way you're not having a, you're staggering these. Every other one. So our next panel will go in here and we'll not have a seam that continues up. So we're going to go ahead and put this panel up right now. Put the fastener right between the two seams. And we'll start from there. Okay, we're going to go ahead and set up our next panel around the window. This is a cool little trick what you can do. is if you press on the panel itself against the window, it'll leave us with an indent of where that window is and exactly where we need to cut. That should fit in just nice and snug around the window. Now we're ready for fasteners. We can continue up the wall. Now that you have your panel installed, you're going to be ready to put on your brick. The next step is mixing up your adhesive. This is the modified base coat old nail adhesive. This is the one you're going to be using on this panel. Now that you have your mixing complete, you're going to want to check the consistency of it. You're going to want to make sure that this is an icing texture. We have a good icing texture there. Be sure to check the instructions on the back of the bag. Next step we're going to want to do is let this sit for at least 8 to 10 minutes. Now that we whipped that a second time, we're ready to start filling our icing bag. If you're not familiar with an icing bag, it is similar to like a cake bag or a baking bag. The next step we're going to want to do is make sure that the end is down on the ground, similar to this. Fold your edges. This is just a, a trick to this to keep it a little bit cleaner. You're going to want to take your pointer, go ahead and scoop into the bag. So you feel like you have enough to handle. Then you're going to want to take that bag over the top of your bucket and give it a quick little shake here. Twist it from the back side and there you have like an, ice, an icing bag or a cake bag. And we get a nice consistency coming out. We're going to go ahead and get our corners laid out. This is the Colonial Collection Brick by Old Mill Brick. It's a genuine clay thin brick. Um, it's really nicely done, nice corners, and they're cut perfect. So what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and get those laid out on your corners, and we're going to work our way to the inside on our layout, because you want to always have your cut on the inside. Next step you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put your adhesive onto your brick corners. And the way we do that is we we twist the back of the bag and squeeze in the middle at the exact same time, which gives us a nice even line. You're going to work from the top of your wall down. You're going to start with your corner brick first. You're going to go ahead and stick that in. The 3 8 inch bead of adhesive is all you're going to need. Stick those right into your channels. They set in there perfect. We're going to go ahead and get two lines of this and work our way this way. As you put your brick on, you're going to want to move it just slightly just to get a good set. Back and forth and up and down. Set it on the bottom shelf.
Next step is we're going to want to put our adhesive on. What you're going to want to do is hold your bag at a 45 degree angle while twisting, squeeze the bag to give you a nice 3 8 inch bead. You're going to want to continue this right to your corner. And then we're ready to stick our brick. This is the other added value in using thin brick. Because I can hold a dozen brick in my hand and set brick fairly quick. You can come back and adjust these as you move along if you see that you do not have proper gap. Now on your cuts, in your corner, you want to just measure those just like you would a tile. Go ahead and put those in. Be sure to use a, a wet tile saw, a grinder. Any one of those will work to cut thin brick. It cuts very easy. What you're going to want to do is go ahead and use a level next after you get your two courses on. Go ahead and make a mark on the inside edge of the neck in a brick one or two in, like this. What this is going to do. Is this going to help you line up these brick? As you head down, it'll give you a reference point. To help keep this course in line. Now you can go ahead and set these up. So now we have our line here, which shows our exact course above. So as I work my way into this, I can use that as a reference point to make sure I have a perfect line. On your bottom course down here, you're going to want to put your brick in so that you have a, make sure you have a little bit of a gap between your brick and the flashing to make sure you have some weeping there. That way if moisture gets behind the wall, it has somewhere to go and weep out. Now that you have your brick set, we're going to want to make sure that was set at least 24 hours to make sure you have good adhesion to the panel. Next step, we're going to be wanting to talk about mortar mix. Type S mortar mix is the product you're going to want to be using on this. The reason being for that is it really flows through the cake bag a lot easier. Another recommendation we have is cutting the tip of your cake bag to let it flow through. And the reason being is mortar mix has a little bit more sand in it than your standard adhesive and that helps flow it through.
grouting, you're going to want to take your bag at a 45 degree angle. You're going to want to twist from the back of the bag and squeeze at the exact same time. This gives you a nice, even flow of grout. You're going to want to have that grout extend out past the brick to make sure you have enough to tool with. Come back and do your verticals the same way. Squeeze and twist at the same time. Really easy to use. Takes a little bit of practice, but you'll have it in no time. Now you're going to want to make sure to not do too big of an area before you come back and check your grout to make sure it hasn't set up too much. So maybe no bigger than a four foot by four foot area. If it's in direct sunlight, you might even want to make that smaller. Once the moisture starts pulling from the grout, you'll see it kind of bed into the brick a little bit, as you can see it here. But what you do is, is you're going to want to press on that, and if you still have mud coming back, it's not ready. This is almost ready here. There's a couple of different grouting tools out there. You can go ahead and just use an oak dowel. This is a one inch dowel. It's nice for grouting. Uh, or you can get these at any of your building supply locations. It's just a grouting tool. This is kind of nice because you can come back and forth with this as you grout. What you're going to want to do when grouting is push the grout in, let the excess fall off. We're going to come back and brush this and clean that up. But you really want to embed that grout into the brick. You can come over that a couple of times. Sometimes the different tools will make different looks. The oak tool I like because it leaves a real natural look to the grout. It tends to grab the rocks and drag them slightly. The metal tools tend to give more of a smooth look. Go ahead and check as you work your way down the wall. Make sure it's set up. If you do it too early, what's going to happen is the grout's going to end up sticking to the brick and it's going to be really hard to clean off. You want it to fall away as you grout. When you're tooling this, go ahead and take a little bit of mud in your hand. And you're going to use that for anywhere you have a, a missing spot or a hole or anything like that where you see like it needs to have a little bit of mud. You can go ahead and take that little bit, press it in there, and you can tool right over that. So after you've tooled it, you're going to go ahead and use a stiff bristle brush to brush the grout, taking off the excess grout and leaving a nice clean finished edge. This is where this brick really starts to pop out and show how well it looks. Hey, your project's complete. The Old Mill system was a perfect fit for this exterior project. Make sure you visit us on oldmillbrick.com where you'll learn all the tips and tricks on installing thin brick. And we'll see you next time.